rigged up like a booby trap. In addition to stronger armor, the Abrams' new sights and fire controls were a huge advance over earlier tanks. In combat, a tank's crew lives or dies by its ability to see and shoot the enemy before they can be spotted. In an Abrams, the tank commander and loader can stand to scan the horizon. But once the hatch is closed, the tank becomes a sealed armored box. To check around the tank, the commander gains a 360 degree view through six rectangular periscopes. He can also look through the gunner's sights, which have both optical and thermal imaging. The thermal option detects radiant heat through fog, dust, and darkness. I actually prefer shooting at nighttime. Daylight, you're looking out there, you see green bushes, you see things moving. We're in thermals, you see a hot spot, that's target. With a target in his sights, the gunner activates the fire control computer that factors in the tank's speed, wind velocity, and bend of the gun. The killing combination of marksmanship and technology makes the Abrams notoriously accurate. And the tank's stabilized gun platform allows the gunner to fire on the move. The M1A1 is a stabilized platform. We can actually shoot, move, and communicate on the move. Max speed's 42 mile an hour. We can actually shoot at 42 mile an hour. And when the sun goes down and temperatures drop at 29 palms, the Abrams is at its deadliest. Tank crews undergo one of the hardest tests, facing moving targets and both offensive and defensive scenarios. As the tanks head out to the range, temperatures fall, which means warm objects will stand out against a cool background. No one has any idea where the targets will appear. The exercise is controlled from a tower where Bravo Company Commander Captain David Wildman monitors the crew's night fire performance, watching them with high-powered infrared equipment. What you're seeing here is a forward-looking infrared flare. It uh, gives us the ability to look down range uh, upwards to, this is a 50 power camera. You can probably see all the way down the range that the target's presented itself a good seven to eight kilometers. Wildman communicates with other officers about when and where a target will pop up. With the aid of GPS coordinates and the infrared camera's extreme magnification, he keeps track of each crew's accuracy. Yeah, Wildman has a tanker's eye view of the firing range. The image here is similar to what the tanker would be seeing as if he looked through his sights right now. Thermal works on a variation of heat between the object that you're looking at and its surrounding area. Uh, either it's hotter or it's colder. The device picks up the, uh, the difference in heat and displays an image that's readable to the human eye, essentially, when it's dark. And it gives us the ability to fire at night. Generally, we would rather operate at night than rather than in the day, simply because our technology outpaces most of our adversaries and we can just operate better at night. Finding targets may be easier at night, but there are still plenty of challenges involved in operating in the dark. It becomes a little bit different. You can no longer see out of your periscopes. You can no longer see out of your 50 caliber sight. So you're solely reliant on either searching through a set of night vision goggles or you're only gonna be able to see about 20 meters in front of your face, which does a tank very little good in open terrain like this, but it makes the crew coordinate more because now the tank commander's head's down, the gunner's head is in the hole, the thermals are, are up and running. Wildman focuses on the targets and monitors the hits and misses. At the height of this mock battle, six guns are blazing at once. targets. All of the crews pass this crucial test.
battle tested, the Abrams has gone head to head with a wide variety of tanks, swapping shot for shot and always coming out on top. One advantage that makes it so formidable is armor. Exact details are classified, but it is known that the armor consists of layers of highly advanced materials. A steel shell forms the outer layer, with large slabs of ceramic underneath. The Abrams also has a layer, or rods, of depleted uranium, adding even greater strength than steel alone. The last layer is Kevlar, reducing the chance of spalling, which happens when splinters and pieces break away from blocks of metal or ceramic. The Abrams was designed so that its crew could survive even a deadly strike. Inevitably, an enemy gunner gets a clean shot at an Abrams. One feature of the Abrams is that gun rounds are stored in a blast-proof chamber in the back of the turret. Pressure on the top of the chamber blows the doors outward, and the force of the blast is directed away from the crew. And if a blaze does break out, the Abrams has an onboard fire extinguisher. San Juan A1's survivability is awesome. The onboard fire suppression system, the individual crew compartments with the fire suppression system on board, and with the ammunition behind blast doors, if a round does penetrate the ammunition compartment, the crew will survive. Being on the M1 A1 during combat and being fired upon, you actually feel pretty well protected inside that vehicle. The M1 A1's armor package it's got right now uh, can basically take a direct hit from any known threat vehicle. And we expect to walk away, away from that firefight still alive. Gunner, save on two tanks. Left tank first. But life inside an Abrams is still often grueling. Tank gunner Michael Fasella has served two combat tours in an Abrams. One thing is if you're claustrophobic, tanks is probably not the best way. Um, breach comes back, fills up the, the area you're seeing right now. I always have something touching on the right or the left. It's long nights, you only have four people on a crew, so if you're able to sleep for eight hours, we'll cut that eight hours into four, and that's how much sleep you're actually able to get, is those two hours. Uh, same thing goes with the heat. Temperatures rise 10 to 15 degrees being inside the turret. So uh, it's just a lot of sweating. Another hardship is staying awake with the heat, staying focused. With an Iraq, it's very quick. Somebody will jump out, shoot, and they'll run away. So if you're not ready at that instant, you're not gonna get them. So everything's about being 100% focused 100% of the time. It's very challenging. It's, it's hard to keep your mind on all the time, especially with the temperatures rising 130s. It's very hard in that sense. It's a bonding experience, being so close to everybody in the tank. You know, obviously we sweat a lot, we stink a lot, so it's, it's a weird, it's like a unity that we have. Uh, I don't think I smell, he doesn't think he smells, but to everybody else, we all stink, so. The longest that I've been without a full shower shower is uh, 42 days. But uh, you also gotta deal with the flies. <laughs> You sit there, you concentrate on what you're doing, and you just sit there and talk. You, you learn a lot about guys. It's just a very good camaraderie. I wouldn't trade for nothing. It's great.